Hello friends and welcome back to Philippians, Paul's letter from his own lockdown in prison. I've really enjoyed sharing this letter with you and thank you for joining me. But sadly, this is going to be the last episode, at least for the time being. As lockdown in the UK eases up, I've been in consultation with our leadership team here at Caution Baptist Church, and it's clear that we now need to put our focus into the gradual reopening of the church. But if lockdown is imposed on us again, then we'll be back for some more Philippians. Meanwhile, we'll be continuing our Sunday sermon videos, which you can find on our YouTube channel. Uh, but for our final episode today, we've got a fantastic passage of scripture. Philippians chapter 3 and verses 12 to 14. Paul has been writing about how he wants to know Jesus Christ more and more. And now he adds this. Not that I have already obtained all this, or have already arrived at my goal, but I press on to take hold of that for which Christ Jesus took hold of me. Brothers and sisters, I do not consider myself yet to have taken hold of it, but one thing I do, forgetting what is behind and straining towards what is ahead, I press on towards the goal to win the prize for which God has called me heavenwards in Christ Jesus. What fantastic words they are. Even in prison, Paul is not stagnating. I press on to take hold of that for which Christ Jesus has taken hold of me. Do you realize that God has taken hold of you not so that you would remain forever as you are today with all your sins and weaknesses, but so that you would become like the Lord Jesus Christ. How do we grow? Well, Paul tells us, he gives us here uh, two directions to help us become more like Jesus. The first is by forgetting what lies behind, our failures, our regrets. It saps our resolve if we dwell on these things. I wonder what it is as we emerge from lockdown that you need to leave behind. What do you need to forget? If you're depressed, you're defeated by thoughts of past sins and failures, then thank God that Jesus died for them. Bring them to the cross and let those failures go. But on the other hand, don't live on past achievements. It's great to look back and see what God has done in our lives. But it's a sad thing if our Christian story ends somewhere in the past. The Christian life is a race and we have to press on to the very end. And that's why Paul tells us not only, firstly, to forget what lies behind, but secondly, to press on to what's ahead. Lives geared for maximum effectiveness for God not frittered away on trivialities. Is that your goal? Because that's why Christ has taken hold of us. And this isn't a burden, this is a great privilege because there's simply nothing better than knowing Jesus Christ. That's why you were created, that's where you will find fulfillment. Now, as we emerge from lockdown, there are bound to be many demands pressing in on us family demands, financial demands, social demands, medical demands perhaps, even haircut demands. That They're legitimate demands and, and they make a legitimate claim on our time. We're going to have to give attention to these things. But in the midst of it all, brothers and sisters, watch out that you don't forget that the goal, the end of everything, is the glory of Jesus Christ. Paul, like us, lived under great pressure, but he urges us to make Christ the goal of our living, not to get sidetracked and miss the target. Let me close this series of videos with a story. I was 12 years old, growing up on the Isle of Man, and I joined the Sea Cadets. Goodness knows why, because I only have to look at a boat and I throw up. But anyway, this night we were meeting in headquarters and everybody was very excited because we were going to get to do some rifle shooting. Now, I had two older brothers who were very successful at, at rifle shooting on the Isle of Man. We had a house full of trophies when I was a little kid. And the leader of our sea cadets knew this. 
So when it came my turn for shooting the rifle at the target, uh, he announced to everybody, now Larkman, we expect you to be good at this. Your brothers are champions and, well, no pressure on a 12 year old, but Larkman, you ought to be good at this. Well, I laid down where I was told to lay down. I pointed the rifle down, down the range in the same direction that everybody else was pointing it. And the commander barked out the orders. We had five shots each and he said, Larkman, I want you to aim at the target on your left. And I peered down the barrel of this rifle and somehow it had never been picked up at that stage, just how poor my eyesight is. I didn't have any spectacles. As I peered down this rifle barrel, I thought to myself, what target? I can't see any target. But I was a quiet lad and I didn't like to disappoint the man who had such great faith in me. So he said, come on, Larkman, we haven't got all night. Start firing. So I took my first shot. Larkman, you missed the target altogether. Pull your socks up, lad. Well, the same thing happened with shot number two. And number three. And number four. Larkman, it's your fifth and final shot. Your last chance to rescue yourself from disgrace. Come on. Bang silence and then Larkman I don't believe it you've hit the bullseye Hooray! on the wrong target Ooh. well now before you feel too sorry for that little 12 year old I can hasten to tell you I don't think I cared all that much really it's never been one of my great goals in life to be able to shoot a rifle well but I can tell you this, brothers and sisters, there is one target I definitely do not want to miss. I press on to take hold of that for which Christ Jesus has taken hold of me. Is that you too? Come on, let's pray together. Father, we thank you for being with us through lockdown and for all that you've been teaching us. Help us by your spirit to emerge from lockdown with Christ right at the centre of our lives. For your glory's sake. Amen. God bless you, friends. Bye for now.